that cruise control sure is nice. Got everything working in today's video. So we're back on the project here, cruise control part two. Uh, so I have done a little bit of work here, kind of preparatory work. Uh, I didn't figure you guys want to see that. I removed the gauge cluster, uh, which is sitting over there, and I'd forgotten that it is not super easy to take out. You actually have to drop the steering wheel down just a little bit so that you can snake it up and over to get out. So I did that. Uh, I also did, um, I got my pins, my wires coming from a tack module. And under here you can see my tack module is right there. So I actually just pinned these wires. Uh, I'll put the, uh, uh, the diagram up on the screen here real quick. And you can see that uh, I think going from memory it's 4, 5, and 14 maybe. But anyway, there's three wires. Um, when I bought my PSI harness, I actually did not uh, check the box to add those wires. So luckily I had the stock harness from the, uh, the engine. So I was able to depin that. But while I was depinning that, I figured out that it's the same pin as the uh, uh, ECU. So uh, that's kind of a nice little tidbit there. So if you have some extra ECU wires from depinning your uh, uh, harness, and you don't have these three wires for some reason, you probably, you, you should, but if you don't have them, you can use some wires that you've depend from the uh, uh, ECM. But anyway, there's just three wires. There's a, uh, I believe it's a set coast, a resume Excel, and then there's a power wire. So it tells the computer uh, to, to, that, hey, I want, I want uh, cruise control. So when you flip the switch up here to on, it sends 12 volts down to the tech module and engages the system. Um, but anyway, so what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to extend these wires, run them along and up under the dash, and then I've got three relays to put behind here uh, for the setup um, for the uh, Resume Excel set coast, and then I've also got one that uh, will trigger the light on my Dakota Digital. Uh, primarily, that's primarily why I took my gauges out, because I need to get to my Dakota Digital box, which is mounted right here. So I just need to put a uh, negative trigger into there so that it'll trip trip the light so but anyway i'm gonna quit rambling now i'm gonna go ahead and get working on uh extend these wires so i'm gonna go ahead and extend these uh, i got some uh extra uh 16 gauge wire from when i did the wiring of the truck so i'm gonna go ahead and just tag on to the end of those run them up and start setting up the relays so true to form i spent entirely too much time running these wires so at this point, I didn't want to film all this because I figured it'd be boring to just stare at the top of my head because there's close quarters under here and uh, uh, yeah, just kind of boring stuff. So I have got the wire run here. That's what this bundle is here. It's coming from the tack module and it goes down. I haven't secured it yet. It's just hanging here, but it follows down all the, the other harness that I put in previously for the LS and everything else under the seat here. So that is run. I have got my steering column wires. These right here there's the four wires in the switch i extended them i actually ended up putting and you probably can't see it but right here is hey, you can kind of see the gray right there a connector so i got to thinking about this if i ever want to take the steering column out i want to make sure it unplugs so i have it so that you can unplug it's there's a connector there for the four wires for this it sits right on top of the wire harness that comes out of the um, steering column so that the whole thing can be removed so I didn't want to hardwire everything because, man, I thought if I ever want to take this steering column out, that's going to be a problem. So I put that connector in, extend the wires over here. Um, let's see if I can get the light back there. You can kind of see right back there. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is, quite frankly, I'm running out of space, which is crazy. But I didn't want to – I'm going to put vintage air on the truck eventually. I didn't want to put this thing out in the open um, – uh, take up too much real estate. So I'm actually going to put it right on the side of the windshield wiper motor. Uh, I've got this heavy duty Velcro that I've actually held the uh, um, Dakota modules up there. I'm going to do the same thing over there and put my my relays. You can kind of see them. There they are. The three, uh, you can see the white labels back there. I'm going to put them right there. So I'm going to, uh, ran out of time today, so I'm not going to be able to do there, you can see them a little better now. I uh, ran out of time today, so I didn't uh, get everything wired, but I got all the wires run, so that is good. Um, so all that's left now is to terminate all these things, get the relays in there, and test it. So I want to test, just to be 100% sure that I got these wires crimped right. I'm 99.9% that I've got these things color-coded correctly. Um, 
with the Dakota switch. Uh, don't mind that purple wire. I didn't uh, actually have any green wire left, so I ended up using uh, purple wire for the green wire coming out of the Dakota switch. But everything's labeled. I did the uh, same thing with the heat shrink um, label maker so that everything... Uh, when, I'm, when I'm working on this down the road, I know what's going on. So, um, But anyway, I'm going to take a break for today, and I'll pick up this video uh, hopefully tomorrow. We can get all these uh, relays uh, hooked up real quick. And pop the relays in there and go out and do some cruise control videos. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, catch up uh, tomorrow. All right, so it's into the next day. And I uh, actually came up here for a little bit because uh, work was stressing me out at home, trying to work from home with all the kids, everything going on. It's just been, uh, it's been stressful to say the least. So uh, kudos to single moms and single parents out there because I don't know how you guys do it. Um, I was pulling my hair out. So I came up here for about an hour. I got all the wires hooked up. Uh, I didn't record it because I was kind of I was just on a roll. I was on a mission. I wanted to get it done. I didn't have a lot of time. So uh, basically, I had two bundles of wires hanging out. Um, one coming up and around from the tack module, and then one coming through the dash and down from the switch. Uh, I went ahead and wired those up with the relay diagram here that I actually created. Um, I can't take credit for this because uh, this is actually. I pulled a little bit off the forums, off the 67 to 72 Chevy truck forum, and this is, um, I kind of used um, the, the diagram that was in the PSI conversions manual for my harness, and then I just I just drew my own that would make sense to what I was doing, and to make this look a little more realistic about how the switch actually works. So I wired it up just like this, and that's what this is here. Excuse me, the wire hanging there. So I got my three wires there. I have not hooked the Dakota up yet, but I did... Uh, test the uh, voltages at the tack module with a voltmeter and ran it through all the functions and everything functions like it's supposed to so in theory my uh, reversing deal here should be uh, pulling the ground to my Dakota so I'm going to actually going to put that in here in a minute but I wanted to shoot a video real quick and uh, show that you know it's it's really not as hard as it, it it seems you know especially with this diagram that I made here that shows the exact pins and then I put the relay logic inside the relay there to kind of give an idea of, of better how this works. Uh, these are all um, normally closed how I wired them except for this one which is normally open so when you energize the circuit this one actually clicks over to uh, this relay here this it clicks over to 87 so that when you trigger it it drops back down to 87A to get the signal through it's kind of a it's a weird deal with the way this uh dakota switch is wired up that when you hit the set and, and uh, coast button and the resume excel it 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 pulses the uh, voltage on i think it was the resume excel no matter what so what you do is you wire this up and and it, it didn't really make any sense and i'm having a hard time explaining it but it kind of makes sense in my head is just that you're using the trigger wire is actually the set coast which makes the relays oppose each other so that it won't send the signal the 12 volts down the wrong line when you're pushing the right button uh, it, like i say i'm not very good at explaining this but it does once you get it hooked up it does make sense so um and then i just add this extra relay here that would give me a ground when the system powers on so i could trigger the light on my dash so that's pretty much it uh i've got this thing <clears throat> excuse me i got some extra wire here but i'm going to kind of loop it up into the dash i did it so it was serviceable um there's not a lot of room under the dash, like I said uh, earlier in the video, but uh, I'm gonna, you know, zip tie it up and make it look real nice and put some uh, loom tape on it and everything like that. But uh, I got double side, uh, actually Velcro, high strength Velcro on the back of here, and it's gonna Velcro to the side of the uh, power steering or the power steering, the windshield wiper motor box. So it'll be all accessible. You'll be able to access access the relays. Pull them out from the bottom, so I'm mounting this thing upside down, actually just like it's shown here, so you can get to the relays. They're all labeled down below. Um, so it's it's fairly simple. Uh, I'm going to drop a link in the description of all of these parts, where I got the wire, where I got the bases, the terminals, the relays. That brown one is actually the fuel pump uh, relay in my PSI harness. Um, these are the same relays, except the two gray ones have a resistor in them where that doesn't, but I, for what I'm doing... As a ground trigger, it doesn't matter, so I just reused it. Um, but I think these are like six bucks a piece, and you know, it's it's fairly inexpensive. The most expensive part of this, honestly, is this stock, and I think it's like forty-five bucks, something like that, which is crazy for what it is. But nonetheless, um, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna hook this all together and um, test the light, and I gotta get back home. So. 
Uh, anyway, I appreciate everybody watching. I know there's going to be a lot of questions about this, so please ask below. I'm going to do my best to help. Um, like I say, I'm terrible at trying to explain it words-wise, but I can type it out. Hopefully, that'll help somebody. So I might type it out in the description, too, kind of how this makes sense. So, But please ask questions. Uh, it's really not as hard as it looks. Um, it's just trying to sort through all the wires and get them pinned in the right place. So um, anyway, I will... Uh, Put a, see if I can put a link to this down there, see if I can figure out a place to host that. And uh, we'll go from there. So uh, anyway, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you'd like to. Please share this video. Um, I know it's it, it's lacked a lot of the details of it, but working in tight, compact spaces is not the easiest thing to film. So I'm hoping that my description helps and talking about it helps a little bit. But uh uh, anyway, don't be afraid of wiring. It's not as bad as it seems. Just take your time, one wire at a time. Check continuity. Double check everything. Make sure that you're not sending power down a line. It's supposed to be ground. It's pretty pretty simple. So don't be afraid of it. Uh, anyway, that's all I have for today. So we will see you all next time. I'm a